are still living the lockdown life here in the UK and so recently I've been trying to do a lot of different types of photography to keep myself busy and in practice. And I've been doing a lot of recent local walks to this river and on the riverbank here is this cluster of messy and chaotic trees and it is no woodland or forest by any means. But I did think that this was a good opportunity to practice a bit of tree photography in time for when I am able to travel and I can go visit some good old British woods. So I thought I'd bring you along with me today and talk to you about five things I feel like I have already learned by just practicing in this area. Number one is to simply slow down and this can apply to various types of photography. I am terrible for rushing. <laughs> I either get very excited or I just simply want to move on to another location. Woodland photography is known to be fairly difficult and unless you know the area that you are going to down to a T in every light condition possible, then I don't think it's realistic in thinking that you can just run into some woods and grab a shot instantly. There is a lot to look at and process, especially if this is your first few times doing this type of photography like myself. Getting those great shots is gonna take some time, separating your composition or subject from the chaos of nature. Once you have found a subject of interest, you then need to explore various angles and focal lengths and perspectives before taking your shot. While rushing around, you're more likely to miss a potential image and if you're not really taking care of the images you are taking, not really putting much effort or thought into them, then you may just end up with a bunch of shots of branches and twigs. Number two, light changes everything. Different weather types, times of the day, light conditions will make everything look different. I've been down here a few times now in mostly either sunny or overcast conditions, but I swear every time I walk around here, everything just looks different. Almost to the point where I'm pretty convinced that these trees move themselves. A sunny day is going to give you a very contrasted scene while a cloudy, foggy or rainy day is going to act like a soft box. I find direct sunlight in this location is way too much. There's not a lot of green going on because the trees are bare, it's winter and everything is very chaotic. It's just a lot of branches and with direct harsh contrasted light it makes it more difficult to pull everything apart and pinpoint certain compositions. On a cloudy day it's much easier to spot differing tones or colours and shapes. That doesn't necessarily mean that you should avoid woodland photography during certain weather types. I think images are possible regardless but I think it really does come down to your location and the type of images you wish to create. Number three is a visualization. Visualize, visu, visual, why does it sound really wrong? Visualization. When I first started this woodland or tree photography project, I kept asking myself, how do you know what to take pictures of? How do you find compositions? Woodland photography is a bit like walking in blind as you can't really research what tree to take a picture of. So my technique so far has been just to walk around and see what grabs my attention and then to stop and think, why has it grabbed my attention? Why do I want to take an image of this particular scene? It could be as simple as a color or a shape that stands out, an isolated subject, the way that something interacts with something else in the scene. This then helps me decide how I'm going to take the image. Do I want to be close up and focusing on detail or do I want to go wide and have the subject interact with things around it? Because the chaoticness of this location, of this place, in the images that I have taken so far, I've wanted to reflect how broken these trees are. How they're all scattered around in odd ways and pointing in various directions and 
leaning against each other. It paints a bit of a grungy image of this location, but the trees clearly have stories, whether they've been ravaged by storms and windy weather, or they've just simply over time collapsed. Number four, don't expect a pretty or beautiful image from a location that simply isn't beautiful. It is quite gross here. <laughs> and I'm not really expecting to come away with any stunning images. But for now, I'm just focusing more on getting interesting images. Of course, what we all think is beautiful is going to be different. The trees here are not elegant, and so I'm not really going to look for elegant compositions. Instead, the branches and trunks are very ragged and almost intimidating. Regardless, I think this has been a good exercise for me to be able to pull out compositions from a busy and chaotic place. Number five, the sky isn't helpful at all and watching your exposure is important. So the trees are quite bare and it's not a very dense area so there's a huge amount of sky poking through the treetops and that makes it quite challenging. While composing I have done my best to erase the sky as much as possible if it has no relation to my subject. The sky regardless of weather is very very bright and that light just doesn't seem to quite hit the ground that much which then creates a contrast between the darker woodland floor and the very bright sky. Ultimately, I have had to either exposure bracket or purposefully underexpose to make sure that those highlights are not blown out. This then adds to the editing process as I either have to lift the shadows or merge multiple exposures together to get a well-rounded image. The bare trees and odd shapes also makes it difficult to get a clean edge around my image, but hey, this is lockdown photography. This is all we have. <laughs> Feel free to pop in the comment section down below your own approach to woodland photography and yeah i'll see you next time it's time to go home because i'm absolutely freezing so bye <laughs>